Hello, and welcome to Project Breakout. I'm Kevin Lindemuth, and I'll be teaching you how to come up with an idea for a short film or a feature film. To talk about where ideas come from and you know how to go about writing the scripts and kind of what forms and propels a script, I'll talk about my three addicted to murder movies because the scripts are written in entirely different ways. With the very first one, I was seeing, it was like in the early 90s, and I was seeing a lot of uh, serial killer movies you know, on TV, and I was seeing them at the theater, especially after Natural Born Killers. I was kind of hyped, actually, to do a serial killer movie, but, you know, they were, like, all the same, and it's like, well, how do you make it different? Well, I was itching to do another vampire movie. I uh, had it in my mind to combine those two ideas. And also, way back in college, I had done a short film where um, basically a serial killer um, was killing a woman over and over again, and it actually turned out to be a different woman, but he was seeing the same woman. And for some reason, I liked that idea. So what I did was I, I kind of kept that as one of the main scenes that propelled the movie. And instead of having it as a different woman, I made it a vampire who just liked to be killed over and over again because she wanted to feel what it was to supposedly die and be mortal. So that was kind of a twist on it. So I incorporated this old idea from basically a student, you know, film in college. But I was still kind of struggling with the script and the content of it. And so I uh, got a friend of mine, Tom Piccarelli, um, to help, you know, flesh out the characters and stuff. And that was really a big help because it kind of forced me to finish doing the script and his input, you know, worked really well. And I changed some things back and forth. So now, you know, when I read the script, I don't know what he wrote, what I wrote. Um, so that's good. That's, that's when you know that a collaboration works, when you can't really remember or tell who wrote what. So, so that was really good. So while the first film was a collaboration uh, and it was influenced by you know movies and stuff I was seeing at the time, uh, the second one uh, came about in a slightly different way. I decided to basically do like a prequel but you know tell how Joel became influenced by the vampires. Joel's still in the Midwest before he gets to New York and kind of how he gets to New York and how he meets the first vampire who basically changes him into a vampire, Angie. And so the movie was going to end, basically, with the beginning of Addicted to Murder, you know, the first movie. So it was kind of a prequel. But at the same time, um, because the first movie had a lot of flashbacks and such, the second movie takes place during that movie. So it's like the in-between moments of Addicted to Murder. Uh, and I always kind of had it in the back of my mind, you know, maybe in a couple of years, I'll release it as one big movie and edit in sequentially what will ha you know, what would happen in the movie with Addicted to Murder and Addicted to Murder 2 and combine it like in order of stuff happened. So it was a combination of a prequel and happening at the same time as the first movie, which, which is a little bit of a challenge. Um, but it enabled me to take like a different tone with it because I concentrated on the vampires as well. Um, and that was how I made it different. About a year later, um, I was working on an anthology series uh, called Creature Realm, and each of those had two, like, basically 40-minute movies. And I did two of them, and I was going to do a third, and actually had the material for a third, and it was a vampire tale done by a filmmaker out in Chicago. And I liked it a lot. It was like a, a vampire who was living in prison uh, by choice because he had, you know, an endless supply of blood. He was safe. It was where it was dark. It was kind of an ideal situation for a vampire. And I liked that idea, and I wanted to release it, um, but I didn't want to do another creature realm. And so I figured, well, you know, maybe I could write a short addicted to murder movie to go along with it and incorporate it um, in such a way that it could be, you know, a full-length, you know, addicted to murder movie. So basically I was writing a short, and with it I took two of the characters, two of the vampire characters introduced in... Addicted to Murder 2, and I finished their stories out. And Joel Winter is now like a vampire hunter, as established by you know the end of the first movie. So the script was basically determined by you know what came before it, and also it being a much shorter in length, and going trying to incorporate this other story, which you know I did kind of loosely, but it all fit. I was pretty happy with it. But the third one was definitely me making a short film as opposed to a feature. So each movie was done very differently. You know, the first one was, you know, writing a script from scratch, you know, having a little bit of a struggle with it, getting another writer to help, flushing it out. The second one was kind of dictated by budget. I couldn't do the biggest, you know, budgeted one I wanted to, so I kind of 
backtracked and did something a little bit more creative um, and a little bit more fun. And then the third one, it was basically kind of taking something that half existed already and making something to go along with it. So each was done very differently. And again, you know, ideas, scripts come about, you know, write what you know. Uh, I mean, there are scenes in those Addicted to Murder movies where it's like, you know, almost dialogue verbatim of conversations I've heard and people I've known. I mean, you know, the dialogue, definitely have an ear for that. And you can incorporate, you know, what you hear in real life. And, you know, people you know, you could write those characters and stuff. Just, you know, don't tell them. Um, and again, you know, as I said, if you can't write but have a good idea, find somebody who can write. So those are the important things. Uh, the creativity, you know, you're doing these things zero budget, low budget, you know, no budget, whatever. Um, be creative. I mean, you might as well do something that you want to work on because, you know, it doesn't really matter, you know, what you intend to do with this. I mean, you could, you know, show it on the internet, you could try selling it to home video, whatever, but make sure that you like it because you're going to be working on this for a while. So that's an important thing. Thanks for watching. I'm Kevin Lindemuth for Project Breakout. Tune in again for more career advancing advice.